Caden Live 19.12 is out as of December 19th. And I've actually edited a couple of videos on it. I was already trying it when it was in beta. I really like that they move to one, a better naming scheme when it comes to uh, release. I like a lot of companies that use like, hey, 1912, as in 2019 and the 12th month for release, uh, makes that part pretty clear as to when it was released. Second part is this program, if you have never gone and done video editing in Linux, or maybe you did a few years ago and you're like, isn't it that program used to crash and die all the time and lose your work? Yes, it was. And I've been using it for years, working through crashes um, and watching the product progress. I've donated to the code sprints. I've uh, actively tried to support this project. I have a couple tutorial videos, then I stopped and I wanted to wait till they move to this version before I uh, dive into making more tutorial videos. So I'm planning to make at least a few more, but don't expect real advanced color grading videos and such out of me because I don't use those features, but it does have them, uh, which is why I like uh, the way they have the dashboard set up here with the uh, showing the different color options and multi-track recording. Now they made it a little bit easier when you're setting up the tracks to uh, adjust volume if you're, you know, as they per depict here doing music videos, which is awesome. This is a very powerful vid video editing tool. It is substantially better than it was a couple of years ago when I started producing videos with it. And yes, I know, because everyone's going to ask, have you tried and insert 20 products down below? I originally started at OpenShot. I looked at a handful of other open source ones. I didn't find them as intuitive. Caden Live just does it. The only thing that Caden Live is really, really missing is any type of fancy titling. Uh, and kind of tied with that, like how you've seen people do the uh, titling with motion tracking with a title where a text may, object may follow as someone moves through. Yeah, those features are still just missing. So if you want to add fancy titles, you're doing them on your own in here. Uh, that is one thing about Caden Live. It just doesn't, doesn't have that feature. So um, if that's not a killer for you and for me, I've got over 900 uh, plus, so close to a thousand videos that I've produced and almost all of them, about, I don't know, 99% of them were all produced with Caden Live. I only used OpenShot briefly and found it to be, yeah, not great. And I did try it again more recently and kind of felt the same way. So I'm sticking with Caden Live. Now it is open source, 100% free. It is cross-platform, uh, but I haven't tried it in Windows. I, I don't know how good it works in Windows. Uh, I know a while ago when I tried it, it was eh, um, but I know that some of the bug reports have been improving in Windows. So what did they do different in the 19.12? Uh, so improve timeline responsiveness, fix timeline memory consumption, improve clip handling and caching, fine tune rendering threads, setting for faster rendering. And I've been really impressed. Now, granted, I will pull this up because someone's going to ask. I am rendering everything on an AMD Ryzen 9 3000X 12 core 24 threads. Um, it renders really fast. 1080 video, which is what I record at because I don't look any better in 4K. Uh, 1080 video, uh, 30 minutes of video takes probably 13, 12 minutes to render, uh, depending if you add any effects. And of course, obviously that slows down if you do color grading. Now, I haven't tried it. I don't have the video card for it. Um, it does not have good support to my knowledge. Maybe it's better with other video cards. Good support for GPU rendering. So I'm doing this all processor rendering and I do know it does slower for 4K, but um, like I said, I don't do any 4K, so I don't have the numbers for that particular metric uh, for those wondering. But I'm overall happy with it and I am completely can use my computer while it's rendering. So usually I kick off a video render and I go on about my day if it does take a long time to render. And some of my videos get a little bit long. Uh, they did add a master effects, the ability to apply audio effects uh, on all tracks and set up like a master effects. This is kind of a neat feature so you can just apply to everything. Um, I do like that. It's kind of neat because sometimes that uh, would have been handy in the past when I've had to apply it to each track. And sometimes I do have multiple tracks because I'm compositing from different cameras uh, to do stuff. Audio waveform, they've done a lot of enhancements over this. This is actually what originally moved me away from OpenShot uh, was the audio waveform being so much better even a few years ago. And they keep enhancing that. Uh, a lot of my cuts are just moving audio in and out when I do my editing. And I'm going to do an update, like I said, on how I edit video. I do use this in a more basic basis. Uh, but for me, you know, it does the trick and works. Um, they do have some cool like uh, preview effects, which is less issue for me. Mostly I preview them in real time. If I'm applying anything, I don't usually have to apply any effects. I usually just, because like I said, color grading doesn't make my tutorials any better. Therefore, I don't generally do any type of color grading. Occasionally I do brighten things up if they were a little bit dark. 
And uh, here's some of the fixes for the uh, Windows issues. So cool, they are fixing some issues on that, which is awesome. Um, also, allow seeking on a clip, monitor audio thumbnail, monitor overlay add button. Now this is kind of neat. Um, I usually don't need it this way, um, but it is if it's part of your workflow, you're able to uh, preview some of the audio in there and be able to clip things out. It's kind of cool too. You can, instead of pulling the clip and trimming it in the timeline, you can clip it uh, from the preview and then drag it to the timeline so only the clip comes in. Uh, not a feature I use a lot, but they've definitely added a lot of that and they got a whole list of the full change log. But let's actually show you the program because it's more fun than just talking about some screenshots here. I have a couple of my uh, directories pulled up here and I launched this uh, from App Image. So I'm just launching it from here, uh, Caden Live 12. And I've also condensed it, this layout. And what I mean by that is normally with my layouts, they are uh, across multiple monitors. So I've moved the project monitor, this part here, over to this monitor. That's one nice thing about Caden Live. You can pull these things out and I just drag it over to another screen or drag it back in here. Uh, you do have the ability to build your layout so I can load layout for three screen or one screen. And the one screen layout is really just so I can do this on YouTube because I stretch it across multiple screens. It's hard to present and looks kind of funny. But how do I edit a video? Just gonna give you a real quick idea. Um, let's look at, doo -doo, what do we have here? This is the template I usually use. Now this template isn't really a template, it's just a file I saved and uh, you drag something, oh, let me save it like that. I actually drag something and hit save. Uh, but from there, my editing flow is having these little things that you see at the beginning. So they slide over and they show up here in the project and they're just a simple graphic that I imported in. Like I said, there's no good titling inside of here. So I just drew these graphics, you drag them in. I made a folder here called template and uh, then I just position in these where they need to go using the position. I'll get more in depth in there, so I can give you a quick idea. Now, then for my editing flow, I go over here and uh, let's find something uh, probably in this one. Whatever this video is. <laughs> we'll just drag this video down to the timeline here and you can see how it splits it. What was I talking about? Migrating, that's the video for migration from a hypervisor. This is the raw video. And I just look for the gaps. So as you may have noticed, there's what they refer to as jump cuts when I'm waiting on something. And especially in this particular video, that's where we were waiting for things to transfer. So you can just simply slice things out and press X, boom. So plus X here, highlight this, press delete, and away we go. That's all you have to do to cut out a section of video. They make it pretty simple. Now I did notice since uh, this one, you notice how when I zoom in, I'm just holding the control to zoom in. Suddenly there's no audio over here. As soon as you touch this, the audio comes back. Um, that is a bug report. I guess I'll have to file with them. I'm sure they know about it. The other thing too, is if you wanna know how you can get it so it's not a jump cut, you can go here. So the train, you wanna make the transition smooth. So normally it's gonna go like this and it's a hard transition. If you want to make a smooth transition, you can just drag them over and that'll do a wipe by default and you'll see kind of, right. if you watch it closer, you see it's doing a fade between them. Problem is there's not much change in the text. It's hard to see, but you kind of get the idea. Actually, let's jump way ahead and do the same thing. We'll just, uh, is it a different screen over here. Yeah. X. Delete, drag over and it's, uh, you know, sticky essentially. So it will stick to that. So now we'll have a nice fade to the next level. So you kind of get the idea and then we can slice this back and drag these around and move the things around the timeline, et cetera, et cetera. So it's a pretty, it, I'm gonna do a whole getting started video with it now that they switched this new version, but uh, you can see it's fast and a lot of people say it crashes every time they even drag things to the timeline. I haven't had that problem since switching to this. Matter of fact, it hasn't crashed at all. And other than uh, when I'm zooming in, the pre it, it's each time, each one you have highlighted, the previous one seems to disappear. So if I have this one highlighted, it works, but as soon as you touch this, it does it. But other than that, I haven't had any bugs. I've already, like I said, rendered a few videos for it, and it's worked really, really well for uh, getting things done. Now, does it support color grading and all that? Like I said in the beginning, yes, it does. Yes, you can do all those cool advanced effects. Uh, they're all right here. Here's all those little options for color, blending, uh, grain effects, divide, custom effects here. So your alpha transform effects, including, uh, you can go over here and we can do a color adjustment for this and then 
And you can see in real time, it's doing all the effects. So it's a great video editor. It does have all these effects in it. And like I said, I'll do a video on some of the other features, but for the most part, I'm not using any of that. But uh, nonetheless, it is a great project. I just wanted to let people know it's out there. It's a top notch uh, when it comes to open source video editor and outside of the titling being bad. Uh, well, it works for my channel. So if you like what you see on my channel, you're just trying to create tech tutorials. To me, it's one of those easy free utilities. Um, try it in Windows. Maybe they've gotten a lot better about it, but it certainly works in Windows. So it really fits in with my open source workflow and using uh, Linux on my desktop to do this. I record things in OBS. I drag them over here to uh, do them and edit them here. And, uh, you know, obviously I've gotten quite a bit done with about 900 videos on it. So I'm going to, I put my faith in a product and say it's definitely usable. And there are times when I do color grading. And I'll show you real quick. This was all color graded and edited 4K drone footage uh, on there. And you can see you can do a really high quality video for stuff. That's my Tesla and I was playing with it. Got some more for people asking or follow the channel. Yes, I got some more Tesla videos I'm working on. That's why I have all these edited clips. I just got to get around to compositing them into a new video. And Caden Live is going to be the tool I use to do that. All right, and thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general, even suggestions for new videos. They're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.